Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in another video. This one's going to be about seven signs God is speaking to you. And I feel like this would be a good video because a lot of times when God is speaking to us, we wonder, uh, you know, how to hear it. And the reason why sometimes we can't hear it because, you know, one, maybe we don't have a relationship with him. Or maybe if we do, our relationship on him is built on a sand and not a rock because of our disobedience. Uh, three, could just be out of ignorance. You know, we're lacking wisdom. So, I mean, there's many reasons why. Uh, we don't understand the voice of God, so I hope this video can give you guys a better understanding on uh, when God is trying to talk to you. Now, there's many other signs, too, but these are the seven signs that came to my mind. All right, the first one, I think this is the most important one, is you get conviction of your own sin, okay? When you get conviction of your own sin, that is the Holy Spirit. And this is in John chapter 16, verse 7 to 8. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the Comforter will not come into you. But if I depart... I will send him into you. And when he has come, he will reprove the war world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, so Christ, before Christ left, he gave us a comfort, which is the Holy Spirit. So when you're getting convicted of your own sin, that is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. A lot of people, guys, they could sin and be like on demon time and that type of stuff. And they don't feel any type of guilt, any type of shame. But when you're feeling conviction of your sin, that is God calling you to change. Okay, there's another verse I got for you guys. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 says, For godly sorrow work repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work death. Okay, the sorrow of the world work death, but sorrow, godly sorrow work repentance to salvation. Okay, so when you gain conviction of your own sin, that is God speaking to you. Uh, maybe it's time to give whatever that is, you know, whatever you're getting convicted of. Uh, it could be not only just a sin, it could be certain people, certain friends, uh, family members, you know, if God's convicting you of something, you must hearken to it. There's a reason behind it. And yes, you could go into prayer about it. If you're led to confusion, you know, remember God's not the author of confusion, but maybe for whatever reason, you need more confirmation. You should get definitely get into some prayer and fasting. Number two, is you're going to have open and closed doors, okay? Closed doors, sometimes we pray for things to happen and it doesn't happen because for the mo most part, that's just God protecting you, okay? The reason why he's closing that door of opportunity, uh, closing that door of uh, maybe you're about to get in a relationship with someone and you're wondering why that person kind of like went ghost on you or things are not working out. The minute you started praying or maybe you're praying and God's giving you signs and now you start to see that door is being closed or also you can see a door being open. But you got to be careful because when God's opening a door for you, the Bible says that there's many devils. All right. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Remember, I always tell you guys new levels, new devils. This is in the Bible. Hey, check this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9 says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adverse uh, uh, enemies. Okay, there's many enemies. Every time you're about to level up in life. There's, I always tell y'all this, there's always going to be a crab in a bucket trying to pull you back down. There's always going to be a demon. There's always going to be a devil, a child of Satan who's going to try to stop what God has for you. But best believe, whatever God has for you, no man can stop. They could try. Okay? They, they could try to pull you back down, bring up your past, slander you, hate on you, do whatever they can. They're going to do whatever they can, but no weapons form will prosper. So always understand that when God is opening and closing doors, that is God talking to you. And you must be rejoiced because if he's leading you, you got to trust him that even if the door is being closed, whatever the, whatever door is being closed in your life, you got to trust in God that it's for the better, it's for the greater good. And you might not be able to understand it at that moment, but years from now, 5, 10, 20 years from now, or a couple of weeks, a couple of days later, you're going to realize it was only for your own benefit. It was only for your greater good. Okay, so always understand that. Next one up is... He will speak to you through the scriptures. He'll speak through you through the Bible. You ever have times guys, when you're seeking answers and this has happened to me recently, seeking answers and, you know, you're, you open your Bible to like a random chapter and you notice how that same question, you know, the same answer you're seeking is in the Bible. You know, it was actually in the Bible. So sometimes, guys, if God, God could be talking to you. You're in the Bible and everything that you, the confirmations that you're seeking, the answers that you're seeking is right in your eyes. And the Bible is a word of God. So God will speak to you through his word. So that's why it's important, so important to be actually studying to show yourself approved, reading the Bible for yourself. And, you know, now there's nothing wrong with watching, you know, YouTube videos and or going to church. I'm not against that, but you want to actually be applying it to yourself, reading the Bible for yourself. You want to be hungry for the bread. Think about this is how we should we should think about when it comes to reading our Bible. Let's say we haven't ate food in like 14 days. Don't try this at home you're going to be hungry. You know, that's the same thing. We have to have that same type of energy when it comes to 
uh, same type of perspective when it comes to actually reading our Bible. We want to be hungry for the word because that's how you grow. You want to be hungry for the milk and the meat. So definitely God will speak to you through his word. This is also a good Bible verse too as well. This is in Luke chapter 24, verse 45. It says, uh, then he opened their understanding that he, they might understand the scriptures. Okay, so God will open your un understanding so you will understand the scriptures better. Okay, next one up will be Psalms uh, chapter 119, verse 105. It says, that word is a lamp into thy feet and a light into my path. Okay, so the word of God is a light into your path. So, you know, reading the scriptures, read the, for your, uh, studying to show yourself approved, God can speak to you through that too as well. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Always want to be reading your Bible and all that. So number four is you'll notice that the same problems occur time and time again. Okay, whether, whether it's from your own sins, whether it's from your own sins, or maybe it's someone that you're hanging out with, you're going to notice the same pattern happen over and over again. That's God speaking to you. And he's let, he's warning you because warning always comes before destruction. God will always warn his people before destruction comes. So God can speak through you um, when it comes to when you have me recording. The same problems are recording over and over again. It means it's time to change something. Um, it's time to do something different. It's time to give up somebody, give up a certain thing. So always keep that in the back of your mind. When the same problems are occurring, occurring over and over again, that could have easily been, especially if it could easily be avoided. That is God speaking to you. And, you know, like I said earlier, that God, before destruction happens in your life, God will warn you multiple times over and over again. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. But if you abuse that, destruction lies near. Okay, so the same problems occur time, time and time again. Number five will be, oh, this is a good one. Your discernment will warn you dealing with others and in situations okay your discernment will warn you so this is in 1 corinthians chapter or sorry, sorry 1 john chapter 4 verse 1 it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world okay so when god's taught when god's speaking to you especially let's say if you are at a church or you're learning from someone you know, your discernment is going to increase and God will speak. I remember when I first started my, picking up my Bible, when I first started denying myself, picking up my cross daily, um, I, my discernment wasn't as sharp. And I would watch YouTubers who would talk about like new age stuff. They'll mix a little bit of truth and a whole lot of lies. And that's what agents do. And you got to be very, you know, watchful. And sometimes, you know, that's God speaking to you. Like you got to stop watching this person because best believe that stuff is contagious. If you're, if that false prophet, that deceiver is planting seeds of lies and doubt and confusion in your mind, you're gonna find yourself being confused. Okay, you, his spirit is gonna jump in your in your body. So you gotta be very cautious of who, who's who you're learning from. Okay, and the Holy Spirit will lead you to all things, lead you to certain people to watch, certain people to listen to, and you know that's God speaking to you. When someone's a false prophet, God will let you know. When someone's an agent of the devil, okay, God will let you know, and that's all through. Your discernment. Okay, the Bible says that the uh, discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the discernment will come in hand, in hand, especially when it comes to spiritual warfare, especially when it comes with dealing with certain individuals, because we understand that we're not battling against flesh and blood. We're battling, we're dealing with people's spirit, the spirit that's behind the people. So we don't get mad at the person. We understand there's a spirit using that person. Okay, so your discernment will warn you when it comes to dealing with others. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Uh, you want to protect your energy. Don't be so quick to jump into certain situations, certain friendships, relationships. You got to try the spirit, whether they are of God. Just because someone is uh, professes it to be of God with their words, you'll know a tree by its fruits. You'll know them by their actions, okay, by their deeds. Number six is, well, this is a good one too. He gives you answers through dreams and visions. Guys, this is a good Bible verse I just found. I remember reading this way back, but this is deep. Okay, this is in John, or sorry, John. This is in Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 16. For God speak once, yea, twice, yet man perceive or not. See, so God speaks once and even twice, but yet man perceive it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon man and slumberings upon the bed. Then he opened the ears of man and sealed their instruction. Okay, so it says that God speaks once and twice, but a lot of the times we perceive it not. That's why this video is important because God is speaking to us, but we don't we don't perceive it. We don't under, we don't get it. And it says that in a dream or in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon man and slumberings upon the bed. Okay, so God gives the, he warns us, guys. 
He'll speak to you in, in dreams, dreams of the night, and visions. Okay, so always want to take heed to the dreams and the vision. That's in the book of Job, chapter 33, verse 14 to 15. Okay, I'm pretty sure when Job was going through it, when the, when Satan was attacking him and, and you know the people around him, I'm pretty sure God was giving Job dreams and visions. Okay, so always keep that in mind. God will speak to you. He will talk to you through your dreams and visions. Let's say you're in a, in a relationship, right? And that relationship is leading you to a lake of fire. When Satan's using somebody to lead you to a lake of fire, because that's what the devil does. You got to use someone. Okay. Now, some people are, let me make this very clear. Some people willingly join, you know, willingly join his army. But let's say if you're not, you're not down to do that, he's going to have to use somebody. Okay. And God will give you a dream. You know, let's say something bad happens in a dream. Like, let's say it leads to, you know, spiritual death. That will manifest in the physical realm. So always take heed of that. Remember, no weapon forms against you shall prosper, but sometimes you don't want the weapon that's prospering that you're, you're forming. You're forming that against yourself, you know, through your disobedience, through your rebellion, because the Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Okay, so always keep that in mind. The Most High God will always speak to us, man, through our dreams and visions. It's just up to us to pay attention to it. Next one up is through prayer and meditation, God will speak to us. Let's say if you're praying for something, and like I, like I was talking about earlier, sometimes the prayer, the answer could be no. And, you know, sometimes when that when it's a no, it's actually God protecting you. Okay, so this is why it's important to have a prayer life. Having a prayer life and then meditation, meditating on the scriptures, which all comes in handy with, uh, he'll, you know, he'll speak to you through the scriptures. So meditating on the, on the Bible is key and also through having a prayer life. This is in the book of John chapter tw uh, 10, verse 27 says that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they and they follow me. So if you're being a, uh, a follower of the shepherd, Jesus Christ, you don't think that the shepherd is not going to, you know, talk to you, lead you, show you what to do. All It's all spiritual. That's why we must have a spiritual connection with the father and the son. OK, I'm not against going to church or anything like that, but make sure that the number one thing you should be doing is having your own relationship. I did the own foundation with Christ that's built upon a rock, not a sand. And how do you do that? By abiding by his word, having his spirit abide in you. Okay. So these are the seven signs God is talking to you. If you guys got edified with this video, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. Number one is conviction of your own sin. Number two is open and closed doors. Number three is he will speak to you through the scriptures. Number four is the same problems will occur time and time again. Number five is your discernment will warn you dealing with others and in situations. Number, number six is he will answer you through dreams and visions. Number seven is through prayer and meditation. So I hope you guys got edified from this video. I love you guys so much. God bless you all. I'm out. Peace.